Now presented by EasyStoneCare.com and StoneRefinishing.com, the only granite top polishing video you'll ever need. Made by Stone Guys for Stone Guys. This is the uh, Regent top polishing kit. These are the uh, three inch rigid turbo resin pads uh, with a two inch snail lock backer uh, that fits onto the uh, the two inch snail lock anodized adapter. Um, these are used to remove the scratches and keep a flat finish. This is the four inch hook and loop rigid backer for the snail lock system in the Alpha 1000 grit resin. Here's the MB20 polishing compound. This is the seven inch foam hook and loop backer that's used with the eight inch uh, hog's hair pad and a china marker used for outlining your area. The Makita 9227C is the machine of choice for this procedure. For this video, we're gonna remove a scratch. Start by marking out your area so you know where to start. Spray this section down with a good amount of water enough to lubricate the pad, but not too much. Always place the machine flat on the surface before starting it. This way you avoid causing more damage. Start the machine and lock the trigger, and then position your rear hand on the body of the machine and your front hand over the head and arbor of the machine. This will focus all of the pressure straight down through the arbor, through the pad, and straight onto the surface of the material without creating any unwanted pressure on the sides of the pad. Work in a tight circular pattern and keep an eye on the slurry that's being generated from the pad. The thicker the slurry, the more material you're cutting away, and the faster that this occurs, the faster the material is cutting away. Check your work frequently. After you wipe it down, you can simply blow on the surface to dry out the moisture from the area you have just cut down. Inspect the area closely to make sure that your scratch is gone from the first step. If it is not, you must continue with the first step until the scratch is gone. Don't forget to pay attention to the slurry. Use this as an indicator of how fast the stone is being cut down. Keep your first area as small as possible so you don't end up doing an area that is larger than necessary. Clean off the area again and blow it until it is dry. Take your china marker and mark the outside of the scratch pattern where you have just worked. This will serve as an indicator line of where your area is to be contained. When the stone is wet, you cannot see the scratch pattern and you can end up doing a larger area than necessary because granite is far more difficult to refinish than marble or travertine. It takes a lot longer and going further than necessary will result in a lot of wasted time and effort. With each progressive grit, the time needed will be less and less. You are simply removing the scratches from the previous grit pad, and as you move up, you will have less and less slurry. It is important to keep the pad moving across the surface constantly as to not sit in one spot too long. These particular types of pads are very aggressive and can cut a slight dip into the stone. When you are finished with the step, lift the machine quickly from the surface. Don't forget to always thoroughly clean, dry, and inspect the area very carefully between each grit.
What you want to make sure is that no part of the scratch pattern is more dull or less than the rest. It must all be exactly the same from the center to the outside edge. If it is more dull around the outer perimeter, you have not overlapped properly. You must go back and use the same grit pad and remove all of the previous grit scratches from the outer ring of the scratch pattern. Mark the outside of your scratch pattern to get ready for the next step. Make additional circles outside the one you have just made, representing one ring for each next grit. This will look like a target when you are finished and will help you keep your work inside of a contained area as to not go too far and create more work for yourself. You can also write the number of each grit inside of each ring. This will help you identify with ease which step is next. The idea here is to go over the first line and up to the next line in the ring. This will keep your scratch pattern precise and sharp so that it is easy to overlap with the next step. This system is very easy and requires no indexing of the pads. Simply twist to remove and twist to put back on. The pads will stay true and flat. Spray down your area with water and continue with your next step. I prefer to start with the outer ring of the scratch pattern first and work my way towards the center. This is because often subconsciously you will forget to work enough on the outside resulting in poor overlapping in a scratch pattern that is dull around the outer ring. The ability to precisely control the machine is very important with this procedure. You must be able to go up to the line but not over it so that you do not interfere with your next step. Notice how on this step the slurry is generating very quickly. The stone is cutting very fast and even though it is a 500 grit it still removes a significant amount of material. You must pay attention and not go too far. When you feel you have completed your step Remove the machine and clean up the area and dry it for inspection. Repair any rings that may have been wiped away. You will notice now that the color is coming back significantly. The surface will be smoother to the touch and you will start to be able to see a reflection. To properly inspect your progress you must get down at eye level with the countertop and check the reflection for clarity and for flatness. Change your pad and get ready for the next step by ensuring that the surface is clean and free of any debris. Small debris can get caught under the pad and create rogue scratches. This can cause you to go backwards and start all over again. Again, place the machine on the surface before starting. Start on the outer perimeter of your scratch pattern and work your way towards the center. Even the 1000 grit resin will remove a significant amount of material. It is important to use this pad thoroughly but also to be careful and not create a wave in the surface. Use a good amount of pressure and keep the machine moving across the surface at all times. This is what the slurry should look like when you are finished.
notice a lot of color has come back and the area is getting less and less noticeable as you move on. Get down and look at eye level and make sure that the scratch pattern is consistent and exactly the same throughout the whole area. Now we are finished with the turbo pads and must move on to the Alpha 1000 resin. This is a wet to dry procedure and requires changing from the turbo pads to the 4 inch rigid backer. Put the backer on the adapter just like you did the turbo pads. And then place the Alpha 1000 resin on the hook and loop backer and make sure it is centered the best you can. Make sure the pad surface is clean and free of any debris stuck in the channels. And make sure it is stuck down to the hook and loop very firmly. Clean the surface thoroughly once more. This procedure uses very little water. You don't need much at all. Place the machine flat on the surface and start it with the dial reading the number one position. With very little pressure, work the water around in about half of the area. As the water dries up, it will create a good amount of friction. This is exactly what you want and you should apply more pressure and fight through the machine grabbing the surface. This will generate a lot of heat and will polish the stone mechanically very quickly. The water will eventually dry up completely and you can keep going for several seconds after this occurs. You may hear a high pitched screeching sound and this is perfectly okay. It is just the diamond scratching the surface in a very, very fine pattern. When you are done, remove the machine and spray a fine mist of water across the area and buff it clean. When it is dry, thoroughly inspect the area to make sure that the whole area is the same and there are no areas that are more dull than the other. Here you can see that I have done half of the area that we worked on. You can see the drastic difference between the 1000 grit turbo when used wet and the 1000 grit alpha resin when used wet to dry. This wet to dry friction generates a tremendous amount of heat and is the key to popping a perfect shine on a granite countertop. Continue with this procedure, adding water as necessary to create the friction until you are done. You will know you are done when the whole area looks the same and there is no distinguishing outline from the area that you have previously worked on. It should blend in with the rest of the countertop and not have a distinct outline. Check the surface temperature frequently to make sure it is not too hot to touch. If it is too hot to touch, it is too hot to polish. You must let it cool so that it is warm or lukewarm. On some stones, such as this one, the 1000 grit resin will produce an almost factory finish. It will be difficult to see the area that you are working on as it will blend in very nicely with the rest of the stone. At this point, we are almost finished. Do any touch-ups as needed to make sure that there is no distinguishing outline from the area that you are working on. If there is still an obvious cloudy area, then you may move on to the 2000 and sometimes 3000 alpha resin. Each progressive grit will make a significant difference in the amount of clarity and shine on the counter before proceeding to the final step. Here you can see a slight haze in the area that we have just worked on. This is fine and it is ready for the next step which is the final polishing step where we use the MB20 polishing compound. MB20 is a white cream. Use about the size of a marble and spread it on the surface. Use the seven inch backer and place the eight inch hog's hair pad on the backer. Place the hog's hair pad over the cream and start the machine on the number one setting. Spread it around over the area to be worked on so that it forms a thin haze. This process is also wet to dry 
So when it starts to dry up, it will grab from the friction just like the alpha resin pad did. Continue through this friction until it is burnished completely from the surface. You should see a shine starting to form during this process. If you need to, you may add additional pressure, although a lot of pressure is not needed like it is when you are using diamonds. Continue to move the machine across the surface and burnish the product completely from the surface. When it is all gone, you may release the pressure and just go over the area to buff it to make sure that it is clean. Here you can see the shine has come back and is almost ready to be presented to the customer. On many stones, a second or sometimes third application will be necessary to get the proper finish. For the additional applications, you don't need to add much product. You can add a little bit of water to the product to thin it out and also to create a little bit more friction when it goes dry. If you do need a third or even a fourth application, typically you don't need to add more product, just water. The product that is built up into the pad will still be usable and will help you clean up the surface and pop that final shine. Here I have finished half of the area that we had originally worked on. Now it is time to do the other half. While many people prefer to increase the speed of the machine as the procedure continues, some prefer to leave the setting on number one. Number one is 600 RPM and will work just fine for most or all stones using this product. This will reduce the distance of splatter and help keep your work and surrounding areas clean. Continue to burnish the whole area and blend in with the surrounding area. When it is done properly, this product will create a factory finish equivalent polish and should be impossible to detect where the repair was made. When this product was first released, there was a concern that it was a topical application. Many tests have been conducted to verify this and to this day nothing has indicated that this is a topical finish. This provides a factory finish on granite and on serpentine and green marble as well. If any touch-ups are needed, simply mist the area with a little bit of water and do not add any more product. Quickly buff the area and burnish dry using little to no additional pressure. <laughs> 